A good midday Tuesday to you. Roger Hill of Weathering Heights, Velco Weather Hazards Forecaster. This weather video, driven by 802cars.com, representing 802 Toyota, Twin City Subaru, and 802 Honda. They're all located off of exit 7 on Interstate 89. Call your attention first to some smoke. These are, of course, wildfires that have been out of control of parts of Southern California, mostly uh, the northwestern areas, northern areas of uh, Northern California, and then also some scattered fires of in the Pacific Northwest and up into British Columbia. You can see a lot of smoke that trails off and heads uh, basically north and east. It's uh, overtopping the ridge of higher pressure that's been plaguing and making for very dry, uh, hot conditions across the west. And the east and central areas, you can see a lot of that smoke from these wildfires of previous days uh, tracking two ways. It's spinning around an upper level low. This is another upper low. But this, uh, in this case, it's being pulled and split south and pulled out to sea or pushed off to the north and east, caught by the uh, upper-level winds and uh, running through Quebec. Right now, we have this upper-level system here, and this is going to be bringing us a little bit of a dance of thunderstorm activity, some new development popping over southern parts of New England. Most of the activity is offshore or has been hanging out to the western side, the colder side of this uh, upper low across portions of uh, mainly Pennsylvania earlier and now portions of central and western New York. Current conditions, we have the upper uh, low pressure center here and most of this heavier rain, a swath of moisture is wrapped around its western periphery. But there's some other thunderstorms that have been forming in this uh, southerly flow crossing parts of the, uh, the plains of uh, Connecticut into parts of uh, Massachusetts and some of these could make it into southern parts of Vermont or New Hampshire and probably most of these will split off like this. A few could develop in the southern western parts of Vermont a little bit later on this afternoon. We'll be watching and monitoring. Looking at the HRF model real quickly here, this uh, upper level system which is uh, spinning away in New York uh, will then open up uh, as a trough of lower pressure and then push off to the east of us and lose a lot of its characteristics as it does so. This is valid uh, later on this evening. So a lot of the activity looks like it dies out pretty quickly once the uh, sun sets. And looking at the HRRR model here, uh, most of that activity uh, makes it into southern New Hampshire, as you can see here. And then a little bit on the western side into Rutland and uh, Bennington County maybe up into Addison County, and then that kind of uh, falls apart. And looking at less activity once we get uh, into about 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock. And so the quick uh, European model, six hourly take, and uh, this would be valid at 2 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday morning. And you can see that little frontal system comes in, and then things do flare up mainly for northern and western parts of Vermont. And that kind of just lags a little bit into the overnight period and Thursday morning, and then that frontal boundary heads off to the south. So Thursday looks like the best day coming, 10, 19 millibars uh, hectopascals by uh, early Friday morning. And then we have this business here. This is coming in a little bit faster where showers and thunderstorms will probably reach portions of western Vermont later in the afternoon on Friday. This looks like the most significant, uh, more robust uh, precipitation totals here, so something we'll have to keep a close eye on. And then uh, that moves on out as we get into uh, later in the day on mostly Saturday evening into Saturday night. And then high pressure returns for a couple fairly nice days, it look, as it looks right now, for uh, Sunday and probably lasting into Monday. Nothing major in the precipitation department. This is uh, centered on Burlington, the uh, GFS ensemble. And you can see these little minor showers here. This is three tenths, six tenths, and so forth. You can see the bigger uh, event would occur uh, later in the day on, uh, on the 17th of August. That would be this coming Friday and into Saturday. So this is a little bit more robust. And still we're talking about six tenths with this uh, cluster in this group. Total precipitation from the uh, Weather Prediction Center, seven days of totals.
and this is a little bit over two inches. This is the blue line is the one inch amount. So we're definitely in the ballpark here for some uh, much needed rainfall. Okay, switching the temperature, looking at the GFS Ensemble. This is the warmest day. This is 85 degrees. This is centered on Burlington, so this could be a, a heat indice kind of day, but uh, European is not matching up very well with that. I'm seeing a little bit of an undulation here uh, with the warmest uh, temperatures of roughly about the top of Mount Mansfield. And you can also see a slight cool down uh, once we get into well, basically Sunday and Monday and beyond that point with uh, cooler nighttime temperatures. And you can kind of notice that trend here. Temperatures at night uh, getting down below 60 degrees. That should feel good. Quick look at daytime highs over the next five days. Uh, kind of neutral, a little bit below normal. This is where these upper level systems have been spinning away. Um, and then we have uh, warmer than normal conditions to the north and out west and also to the south. Three days later, that's what it looks like. It looks like we cool down, if anything, and uh, temperatures running about three degrees above normal. Uh, for northern areas, more neutral southern areas. First looking at the northern hemisphere in North America, we do have some uh, equal cool spots as warm spots. A little bit warmer here, and this is uh, of course associated with the uh, warmth that we've been seeing. It's been warm over Greenland, which was cooler earlier, but some of that coolness has now uh, made it into parts of Canada, up around Alaska, the North Slope region. And the southern hemisphere, Antarctica, has really warmed up 1.4 degrees above normal. The Arctic, 1.3 degrees above normal, and uh, the world as a whole, about four-tenths above normal, with the baseline of uh, 1979 through 2000. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights, thanks for watching.